But I think the important thing to, to wrap our heads around is that it's a network of entities. So not one entity is providing all those services. They're relying on each other to be a closed loop referral system and a safety net in which all those services happen. Substance use disorder, or SUD, is a growing concern in our community. Jackson County has many well-established organizations that collectively make up the support effort for those with SUD issues. The Jackson County Resource Network, JCRN, is being formed to help people in and through their recovery journeys. This March, the OHA will announce the recipients of $277 million in funding statewide from more than 400 total organizations. 22 organizations from Jackson County apply. Hopefully you all know about the Behavioral Health Resource Network, the BURN, which for Jackson County, the group has named it Jackson County Resource Network. It was designed that you could either be one single entity you are considered the burn, or it was a network of entities, which is actually what our region is going to do, that are receiving funds individually with their own proposal for how they are going to fit the burn, provide the services. But even though they're submitting their individual applications, they have all come together under this umbrella. And there's there's an understanding of coordination and collaboration and the fact that there are all these particular services that are required um, legislatively to make up the burn that they're agreeing to provide. And, and I'm assuming what will come from this is like a formal memorandum of understanding and agreements that will be secured to really, you know, to really shore that up. But I think the important thing to, to wrap our heads around is that it's a network of entities. So not one entity is providing all those services. They're relying on each other to be a closed loop referral system and a safety net in which all those services happen. So the idea is a no wrong door. Peers were heavily emphasized, case managers, just a robust referral system and the importance of follow, follow up. There were 400, over 400 applications received by OHA. At the time, funding tentatively was going to be announced mid-February, but literally last night I saw an email that it's more so going to bleed into like the middle of March. There was $277 million available and there was nothing, no, nothing specific said about a particular limit per county or region or, or entity. I think what we're seeing here is an acknowledgement that there needs to be a change and um an expenditure of these dollars and uh, a lot of fast pedaling to figure out how best to do that across the state. The strategic planning initiative, SPI is something else that has popped up in the meantime, comes from an OHA funded project to engage counties um, basically through technical assistance. So eight months of free support and technical assistance to, to address you know, those issues related to high SUD burden. The consulting entity in our area that was retained through like a, a removed contract with between OHA and Lines for Life is called Co-Imagine Health and Synergy Health Consulting. This was stood up to, to be able to take advantage of legislative funding opportunities for this region, although the initiative was originally designed for rural areas and we don't have a rural designation down here. And so I think the group has kind of pivoted to more so just position ourselves in coordination with each other so that we can be able to leverage resources as they come available. I think it's it's trying to focus a little bit on that intersection of where law enforcement connects with people suffering from SUD. And I think that's where they're gonna be making some recommendations for needs uh, based on those two pieces. In terms of timelines, like how long is this sticking around or you know, what's the length? SPI is short term, you know, shorter term um, technical assistance. The Behavioral Health Resource Network is, is definitely a, a long term strategy. This is something that is changing the structure of hopefully how we do business and how we engage together as a network. I just want to thank you for being willing to come and talk and take point on this because within our community, the idea of housing, particularly kind of those 
safety net, low barrier housing elements. Uh, the idea of 24 seven crisis response, what some have referred to as the cahoots model. And the idea of a burn are three things that have gotten a lot of, um, a lot of attention, particularly in the light of 110, when we take things like police responses to behavioral health, jail responses to folks who are you know, in our community and hospital responses, there's this thought of what else is gonna stand up in its place? Are we going to have services in, um, in place to take their, you know, as we do this, this work under a new umbrella? And I think that there's been a lot of different discussions happening within our community on those subjects. So um, very timely for sure. Okay.